All right, it is 20 minutes past the hour, 1020 Eastern. So I want to welcome Dr. Charles Severance to chat with us about SUGI. Dr. Chuck needs no introduction. He's the founding architect of, uh, of Sakai. He's the founder of Learning Experiences, and he has a race car, which is pretty exciting too. So Dr. Chuck, take it away. So Josh, can you hear me now? You sound amazing. Okay. So uh, hello, everybody, and uh, thanks for coming to Sugi. We're having, I think, a great time at Open Aperio. I love this 10-minute format. It's kind of like the, uh, the Twitter of presentations. you got to squeeze it into 10 minutes. So, um, oops, let me get to, there we go. So Sugi is basically a framework to build, host, and then great learning applications. And we heard Inga in the previous talk talk about how they use Sugi as a library to add value to Xerti. My curiosity is, uh, I wonder if it makes it work in Google Classroom because uh, Sugi uh, also works in Google Classroom. So let's review. Um, I declared that 2019 was going to be the year of SUGI. LTI Advantage was coming to a close in around the June timeframe. SUGI was one of the first tools. Uh, the first SUGI was the first actual real piece of software as a tool that was Advantage certified. It became the test platform for all the major vendors. I spent the summer working with Canvas and D2L, Blackboard and uh, Moodle and giving them servers and they still use those servers to this day. And I like to think that uh, having one test platform really helped converge interoperability more rapidly. I was really excited about Sugi Django. You may have seen the great Sugi Django world tour. I did workshop at Aperio 2020, Canvas, Desire to Learn, Blackboard, and Aperio Africa. And it didn't, I mean, everyone thought it was great. I'm not doing a Sugi Django at Open Aperio this year. Everybody thought it was great, but then nobody did anything. I put all this work, two years of work to make Sugi Django work and I'm like, build. And then nobody did, but I'll get to that. I feel, I just kind of felt like, you know, I'm all, all dressed up with nowhere to go. And I also mentioned last year that I was gonna build an online Coursera class, uh, Django for everybody, which is going great. That's gonna uh, come out on Coursera July 20th, I think. It's in QA at Coursera right now. So at the summer, after I did this sort of summer of Sugi and went all over the planet explaining Sugi to everybody and doing these really cool uh, demonstrations, and workshops, nobody picked it up. So in the fall, I'm like, I gave it a go. I, I really thought that people would see the ability to, in a few hours, write an application and they would be drawn, but they weren't. So I'm like, okay, now what do I do? I mean, the software is in great shape. The Django thing is in great shape. Everything is sort of boring. The commit rates dropping. It's just kind of slowly running in production. So I decided that maybe I needed to do something else. And so I, I dedicated myself to building some tools for teachers. I sit now in faculty meetings and when someone goes like, man, I wish blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, let me go write that on the weekend. The other thing is I've gotten increasing interest in, from adopters, right? That like, how do you install this? And I'm like, there's like 40 GitHub repos and here's like 28 scripts to install it. And oops, that's the wrong answer. The answer is there needs to be a, getting started page that's called the getting started page. And I'm also interestingly getting interest in the learning object repository authoring experience. The thing that allows you to basically have your own MOOC that has a horrible authoring experience because I'm the only author, but increasingly I show it to people and they want to use that. And so there's a couple of new tools that are now ready to use. I built a really cool CK editor document annotation. I built a PDF sticky note tool. It's better, uh, and then I'm building a threaded discussion based on the New York University design. Uh, I'm building that in Django to kind of push, um, oops, click, there we go. So this is a tool I wrote. Um, it's, I called it sticky grader. I even have stickygrader.com and um, and the idea is, is the student uploads as a PDF of some type, maybe a presentation like this, and the teacher can scroll around and add sticky notes and the student can reply to the sticky notes. 
And I did this because one of my one of my colleagues wants to teach a course having to do with professional communication. And the thing she wants to do is review students' PowerPoints slash Google Slides and have an interaction with them. And there was nothing else on the planet that could do this. This is all LTI based, plugged in nicely. And this is actually my second tool. The first tool I I was trying to build a PDF annotation tool using this annotator JS. And I just couldn't make it work. I had built, I built a really cool thing that converted PDFs to HTML and try to annotate on top of that. I got that 95% working, but I couldn't get it 100% working. It was a lot of work. And then I'm like, oh, but I got, I figured all this out. So how about I build a tool that uses Seek Editor for the students to type in a paper. And then there's a really cool annotation workflow around that. So I call that CK paper. It's to write a paper in Seek Editor and then have an annotation workflow going back and forth with communication, et cetera, uh, with the teachers. And every time I would build these tools, I would do a new little video. Like, here's a cool tool I wrote. And people are like, Sugi, that's cool. I'm like, when I build a tool, people are interested in Sugi. But when I tell them about Sugi, they don't seem to be interested in Sugi. So this is where I'm gonna start building tools. And so this summer, I've got a graduate student working this summer to take the three-headed, we call it the three-headed monster, the three-headed discussion tool designed by uh, Jeff and Kyle at NYU. And she is building me a Django version of this thing that'll be a Sugi tool, a Sugi Django tool to test a whole bunch of things and work with Kyle and Jeff. They, Kyle and Jeff got this work in about 25% of the code is working. And so we're going to try to finish it all and do it in a way that you can all use it uh, in LTI if you want. Right. So I'm like, oh, this is going to work. If I build enough cool tools, people will use the tool and they'll be like, oh, Sugi, that, that's cool too. So the next thing that I started to see was People on my dev list are like, uh, you got something pretty cool here. I want to install my own server and then I want to install those cool tools. And again, I would say, wow, Sugi is really easy to run in production. You just check this out and you check that out. And here's a script that I kind of came up with that helps me make Amazon instances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we had some conversations in Sakai about quick starts. And I kind of realized that in Sakai and in Sugi, the concept of quick start means I am Dave Evland. I want to run Sugi for my school. I want to pay 20 bucks a month and I want to be able to run it and own it. If Dave Evland, hi Dave, if Dave Evland can run production, a Sakai production or a Tsugi production, then we have succeeded, right? 30 bucks a month. So I built this really cool thing and I took all these, and it took me a long time to take all my weird scripts that I'd been using for years now and turn them into something that you can absolutely start. So I even came up with the quickest of quick starts. You, I made an Amazon image that you can subscribe to. And if you want to do it, you don't run a single script. You just take this image in about a 20 line configuration file and you're running in production. But the Amazon is actually a harder way to do it. The easiest way to put Sugi up is on DigitalOcean because you can get a four CPU box with two gig of RAM and 300 gig hard drive, and you can just go bang, bang, bang. And this Sugi droplet on DigitalOcean, when you've done it, it automatically updates itself. It automatically checks itself. It automatically runs database conversions. Literally, you, this is a as close as you can get to a full production, set it and forget it. And the only time that you're gonna to have to touch this is if you start running out of disk space, then you go to the DigitalOcean and you say, you, you send a note to all your users, say, I will be rebooting tonight. So you go to DigitalOcean and you turn it off, you power it down and you say, double the size of my disk space and then you power it up. It takes about two minutes. If you need more memory, if you need more CPU, if you need more disk space, it's all backed up automatically. These are the instructions on how to do that. And if you look at the scroll bar on the left-hand side of the screen, you see that this page is basically almost half of the documentation of what it would take for Dave Evland or anybody else to run Sugi in production. And so I, that's only a couple of weeks ago because I, I did some, 
I'm, I'm like, I don't have a good answer for all these people on my dev list. And so I'm going to make a good answer. And I think I want to suggest this to the rest of the projects that if you, if you're getting started is more than like two printed sheets of paper. And I don't mean just getting it started for a developer. I mean, get it started in production. Cloud is such that today you literally have no excuse from not being able to put a piece of software into production in about 30 minutes. Think about that for a second. Another thing I want to do, and I'm starting to get interest in, this is a complex slide. I apologize for it. This is how I build MOOCs. This is how I build my learning object repository. I use GitHub. I have auto graders. I have open education resource OER material. I have this Sugi thing. I have this Koseyu thing. I use Pandoc. It's a, a glorious, glorious, architecturally beautiful way to manage open educational resource materials and uh, create online courses and then plug those materials into all the dang systems on the planet. But the user interface for this is terrible and I'm getting increasing interest from folks. I'm even talking to folks like real publishers like O'Reilly that might wanna borrow some of these ideas. And so that's another task I have for the next year. So 2021, uh, this next 12 months, I'm gonna build a lot of tools. I wanna make self-hosting easy again on Amazon or any of the cloud servers. Django, Django, Django is, I know everyone, no one wants to learn PHP, but the dang thing runs. It runs at scale. It runs at scale without even trying. It's so fast. Django is not. You can take Django and you can strap a bunch of rockets onto it. And eventually, if you take this thug of a piece of software and put enough rockets on it, you can get it up at least into the air and then it explodes. I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's not as easy to run scalable Django hosting as it is to run scalable Java or scalable PHP hosting because Django is always been kind of a toy thing. So Django 3 is out and it's got asynchronous. So I expect that's gonna be fixed. I'm not giving up on Django, but I gotta figure out this hosting Django is harder than hosting PHP. And my Django for everybody, like I said, is coming out on Coursera, edX, and Future Learn in uh, less than a month now. And uh, it'll be a little later on edX and Future Learn, which will create for me potentially a giant pool of folks. And so we got about seven minutes left. I, I wanted to leave a bit of time for questions. And uh, so thanks for listening. I'm gonna pop the chat up. I don't know what the Q and where's the chat? Is that, oh, there's the, no, there's not the chat. What's Q and A? Where's the chat? Oh, there's a bunch of people in chat. There we go. Okay, so. Dave, is Dave here even? Oh. Yeah, I see in the chat, Dave. Very good. Very good. So there you go. You are, Dave, you are my muse in so many ways, right? Because you don't have a computer science degree and you're still a, a, a great tech wizard without a computer science degree. So, um, yeah. So we actually, actually, maybe Martin is going to be the one that's going to put up the Sugi server. So instead of having me put the Sugi server up, Martin, because you know, and yeah, I know, I see, I, I assume, because you were talking about Dave Martin. So what we could do is, Martin, you could be one of my guinea pigs for setting up one of those DigitalOcean Sugi servers, and you can run the whole thing, right? So that'd be cool. Then you could easily, um, yeah. So any other questions? Okay. Now that it's the Dave Martin Chuck fan club. My sound is back. No, no, that's not it. No, okay. So I'm seeing no questions. Are you are you talking about my chair, Martin? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, well. Oh, I'm your guinea pig. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, so it 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 has been an exciting year. I. I'm, I, when I've faced in September the realization that my dream of uh, Tsugi as, let me stop the share. Yeah, so maybe you can see me now. 
Yeah. So when I realized in September that my dream of uh, making Sugi a success just as an app platform, which was my core purpose for it, um, I wasn't entirely unhappy. And I have actually been really happy because the work of making Sugi LTI compliant, Google Classroom compliant, LTI Advantage compliant, that was hard, hard work. And and it's nice to, to not modify that code, to just let it sit and let people use it and find bugs in it and fix bugs in it. I'm working through like a bug right now with somebody with LTI Advantage, then we think there's a parameter missing. And it's like, that's fun, right? When you're actually just fixing a tiny bug rather than just trying to build the dang thing in the first place. And now I'm my own customer. And so I'm like, I got an idea. And then like three days later, I've built a PDF annotator. I mean, it literally took me it took me two weeks to build both CK paper and the PDF annotator. The CK paper tool was actually what I ended up with after all of my failed attempts at a PDF annotator. And I'm like, well, the HTML is the problem here. So I'll just stick in a real HTML that's a little cleaner and annotate that. And then I'm like, oh, but I can make this sticky grader. So that was about two weeks. The sticky grader was probably about four days in the CK paper with all the wasted time of trying to make it a PDF annotator. And it was probably uh, like a week and a half. And so I'm actually having fun and working with a student. Um, once she and I, you know, if, if she will force me when she builds this Sugi the, the discussion tool, it will force me to make the Django work better. Right. And so this is how I kind of approach things is that Stephanie's tool is going to be awesome. And if I, if, I, if I don't have a good way to host it in Django and, and a good way to host it FERPA compliant, right? So I've got to work with my local folks and get some FERPA happy hosting, um, which I think I'll be able to do, but it, it, it'll drive me to make Django even more production ready than it is. Um, yeah, so, so Phil, the uh, relationship between Sugi and Sakai is that Sugi, and you can actually go to Nightly, and if you go to Nightly on Sakai Project and you go into Lessons and you go Add Learning App, you will see Sugi already pre-configured in there. And so you, you can go pick and pick the map tool or you can pick the sticky grader or whatever and, and play with it in Sakai. And so, so Sugi integrates into Sakai in the Add Learning App link in Lessons. Yeah, the Ad Learning app, that actually is a flow that was uh, invented by um, by David Bauer of, of uh, Dayton. And he, uh, he invented that and then we're like, oh, learning app, that's way better than way at the bottom called external learning tools. So learning apps are IMS deep link sources that are not just Sugi, but it's also Sugi and half a dozen other uh, content item and deep learning uh, suppliers of links basically that you can plug in to learn. Uh, and when you do that, when you do add learning application, the goal of the user, uh, user experience of that was to make it so that you could not tell where uh, Sakai stopped and where Sugi started. And I think we did a pretty good job of it. So, but we have two minutes left and, um, and I think we should stop unless we're going to a break, but I mean, we might as well stop. Uh, so I, I like being on time. Okay, so thanks everybody for listening. Cheers.